We are now going to make a quick video of the entire Automata box project from stem to stern. Here we go. I'm going to create a document and I'm going to call it Automata box. And I'm going to create it. And here we go. The first thing I'm going to draw, well, why don't I do things in the same order I had you do them in? And so I think the first thing we drew was a cam. So maybe I'll do a quick pair cam. And uh, let's see, when I import cams, I want them in this orientation. That doesn't matter too much. You can draw them on any plane you want. But a pair cam, I'm going to uh, do a one inch circle. These numbers are variable. You can, you can mess around with the numbers a little bit. And then I'm gonna do another circle up here, right at the top there, I don't know, maybe um, three quarters or half inch, a half inch circle. That's fine. I'm going to draw a couple of lines, and I'm going to make them purposefully way too long. It's just easier. So that when I go to my tangent constraint, I can make that line tangent to that circle. And I also want, it looks like it is, but it's not quite, that line also tangent to that circle. Okay, Here, uh, that line to that circle, and that line to that circle. Those are tangent. I'm going to bring out my trim tool, zoom in so I can see stuff, especially with little guys like that. Clean this up a little bit, get rid of extra geometry that I don't need. I don't need that anymore, or that, or that, or that. All right, so I'm working towards a pair cam here. And get rid of those two extraneous bits. I'm going to draw a circle in the center. I'm going to make it 0.27 inches because our physical rods are 0.25. And I'm going to extrude the whole thing by, I don't know, I think we're doing a quarter of an inch. An eighth or a quarter is fine. I'm just going a quarter inch. And there, got a pair cam, no problem. While I'm here, I might as well create a part studio. And maybe I'll do a quick rename. Well, this one's really easy. So uh, how about an elliptical cam? Right, that's just a circle with an off-center hole. So again, I'm going to draw on the right plane, just keeping in mind when I import them, the orientation I want them in. Again, not critical. You can always change it in the assembly. But I'm going to draw, I think the other one was uh, one inch. I'll draw this in the same range. Uh, it was one inch plus the thing on top. I'll make this one 1.5 inches. And I'm going to put a circle halfway between the center and the edge. So it's 1.5 all the way across. So I'm going to put a circle down about here. I'll get my dimension tool. Make it a 0.27 circle again. And um, I want it to be... Well, if it's 1.5 in diameter, it's 0.75 in radius, and I want it to be half the radius, so it's in the center, between the center and the edge. So half of 0.75 is point, I don't know, 0.375 or something like that, but let's just have it do the math. A dimension tool, the distance between here and here is, um, well, how about my diameter, which is 0.75 inches, divided by 2. 0.375, right? Extrude it. By how much? Quarter inch, 0.25. I have two cams. Uh, apparently I do not. I think I just did something to my uh, extrude. Extrude, quarter inch. I pressed the wrong button or something. There it is. There's my, there's my uh, elliptical cam. How about one more? I like cams. Cams, uh, create part studio. I'm gonna do one more. How about a, how about a snail cam? Uh, notice I rename these tabs as I go. It just makes life easier later if you need to go fix something or find the right thing right away. Uh, the properly named snail cam um, on the right plane and similar size, gosh, I don't know, so sketch and a circle tool. Yeah, maybe, um, let me think. How about, um, I don't know. How about a 1.8 inch circle? How about a 1.8 inch circle? These numbers, again, they're variable. And, and then something smaller, maybe 1.5-ish, 1.5-inch circle, maybe 1.4. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, I'm going to go a little smaller than that. Let me get out of that tool, grab that dimension, and change that to maybe 1.3. Yeah, sure. I'm going to get my three-point arc, and I'm going to go from here, the top of the inner circle, to the bottom of the outer circle. And I'm just going to bring that line out here till it transcends that inner geometry, kind of like that. And I'm going to grab a straight line tool and make a straight line from here to here. You'll see why in one sec if you don't know already. And I'm going to trim it up. 
Let's see here. Um, I don't want that. I don't want that. There, snail cam. Circle in the middle, 0.27. Clear it, extrude it. I've done, th well, just about. I've, ju I've done three cams. I've done three cams so far. Okay, three cams. Um, what else do we need? Well, we need a box. Oh, no, no, no. We, the next part is the foot. Right? We need a, we need a, a, a follower. Rename. Follower. And when I import the follower, it's, uh, it's going to be in the same orientation as the cams. So I'm going to draw it on the right plane. Sketch. This was uh, basically you draw like a cookie, uh, like an Oreo, but double stuffed. So, gosh, I don't know. How about two inches? They may have been a different size in another video. It doesn't really matter. Two inches. Extrude it by, I think we're doing one-eighth of an inch. One over eight. Bang. That's one-eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going to put a circle right on top of that. A little bit smaller and a little bit thicker. Sketch. On that face. Circle tool. Um, and I'm going to do, let's see, this one was, uh, what was that circle? That was about, yeah, that was two. So I think I'll do this one as um, 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches. That'll give me a quarter inch on each side. All right, 1.5, and I'm going to extrude this one. I did the other one one eighth. I'm going to do this one twice as far. One quarter of an inch. One over four. All right. Um, we may even have done three eighths. Let's do three eighths. It's a triple. It's not double stuff. It's triple stuff. It's a triple stuffed Oreo. Three eighths of an inch. See, now that part's thicker. That's where the cam's going to ride. And then I'll just do one more circle there and that another two-inch circle. <laughs> another two-inch circle right here. Extrude it by uh, one-eighth, like I've been doing. Extrude by one over eight, one over eight. All right, and, um, and there it is. Okay, now I just have to chop it. Let's see. I'm going to sketch on the right plane, and I'm going to grab a box, and I'm just going to... Get rid of most of it. I just want that little bit down there. So now I'm going to extrude and remove, and it's going the wrong way. So he's trying to remove material that's not there. All we have to do is flip it around with this direction arrow, and it just slices through that material, and I've got that left over. Right? Guess what I want to put in the top? That's right, a 0.27 inch hole. Sketch on that surface. Grab a circle tool. Find the midpoint here. Mouse over. It tells you that midpoint. Mouse over here tells you that midpoint. There's the true midpoint of the geometry. 0.27 inches, bam, and then we'll extrude it down and remove some material just a little bit. I don't know, an eighth of an inch or something, um, uh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Let's see if we if we buzz through it, we'll back off. Remove material. Yes, we went right through it. So that's a little bit too far with that extrude. I'm going to back it off by uh, to maybe one eighth of an inch, one over eight. I don't want to go right through the material. There we go. That's better. So there's my follower foot, okay? Uh, cams, followers, we need a guide because we don't want those rods to wobble. We don't like wobbly rods. Let's make a quick guide. Okay, Part Studio One, no, guide. G-U-I-D-E. I've seen some interesting spellings of that word, guide, but that's how it is. Uh, the guide will be uh, imported, and I want it in this orientation, and I'm going to sketch... The first thing I'm going to start with is the, the business part of it, which is I need the center circle to be 0.3 inches, right? That's so the rod can slide up and down inside there. Now I just need something outside that. How about just a bigger circle? I don't know, maybe that big right there. That's that 0.6. Oh, seems good to me. 0.6, it is. 0.6 inches. I'm going to, let me think. I'm going to go ahead and um, I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll extrude all of this. Oops, wrong tool. Sorry, escape. I don't want that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to choose my tools are off. Yeah, I'm going to choose all of it and extrude it. Oh, I just chose edges. I don't want edges. I want the interior geometries. I want to choose the whole thing. I want to extrude that. What's going on here? It's not taken. I want to I want to extrude that and that. You'll see why in a minute. It's just easier. Uh, and I'm going to extrude it. Yeah, I'll start with an inch. If I have to change it, I'll change it. Right. So I've got a tube here. There is a circle inside we can't see. If we show it, we'll see it. There it is. 
uh, I just need to draw a base for this thing. So I'm going to sketch. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Watch this. I'm going to change that extrusion I just did to a symmetrical extrusion. Oops. Ah, shoot. There. Phew. I'm going to change this to symmetric. That way it won't just go up. It'll go up and down from this point. It'll make my next, it'll make my next uh, objective easier. Because now what I want to do is just draw, I'm going to draw a um, sort of a base for this thing to sit on top of the box. So sketch, top plane, grab my, I'm going to change this to a center point rectangle so that I start here. And there's my rectangle around it. I don't really care about the size. One inch by, why don't you do one by one? Make life easy. One inch is fine with me. I'll do one inch over there too. And so now I'm going to extrude that part uh, just like an eighth of an inch or so. One over eight, bang. And so now what I have is something that looks like this. That'll be a good guide. The reason I held off on doing the sketch one, right? So I want to go to, I want to go back to, I want to light up sketch one and I want to extrude, not that, just that. Um, Hold on a second here. Yeah, that's right. I think. I'm trying to... Oh, no, that's not quite right. Hold on. Um, not the face. I need... It's going to be... You know what the easiest way to do is? I, I could flap around here all day, or I could just do this, make life easy. I tried to take a shortcut, but how about this? Let's just draw on this face. And let's just draw a point three circle again, make life easy. The point three, enter... And then extrude to remove all the material. Remove the material. How much? One inch? No, all of it. Right. So now that I just drilled the hole all the way through it. Good. Bang. Right. There's there's one of my guides. Now um, after the guides, we need what? Oh, a handle. Bam. Uh, part studio. We need a handle. We need to get a handle on this thing. Rename handle. Let's be quick about it. No fancy caps or anything on this one. I'm also going to import it in this orientation. Bang. And my handle, I don't want it to be longer than two inches because then it'll hit the desk. The center will be two inches above the desk, uh, the center of the rotation of the axle. So let's just go ahead and sketch something kind of small but handle-like. Um, I'm just going to do maybe a, a one-inch circle. And then I'm going to do, uh, it's kind of like doing that pair cam. I'm going to do maybe right up here somewhere, um, maybe a half inch circle, 0.5. And I'm going to do that same thing with my lines where I make them tangent, starting off a lot like that pair cam. Um, tangent this to here and this to here. And we're going to clean it up just like we did before. Clean it up, boom, and, and make this tangent to there. And then we clean it. We get rid of extraneous geometries. Bang, bang. Bang, bang, and shazam and shazam. And I think I'll extrude this thing by an eighth or a quarter. Let's try, see, see what an eighth looks like. We can always th thicken it up easily. There's my, sort of the base of my handle. And um, what I'm going to grip, the handle part that I'm going to grip, I'm going to put right about here somewhere, right about there, a little grip. Just half an inch or so, 0. 0.411 sounds good to me. Let's extrude that by half an inch or three quarters or something like that. 0. 0.75 inches. These numbers are variable, of course. Oh, it's starting to look a little bit like a handle. I just need a hole right there. Guess what size that hole is? This ain't rocket science. If you want to do rocket science, you sign up for AP Physics. If this ain't rocket science. This is CAD, 0. 0.27 inches. That's right, people. We got a winner, 0. 0.27. Okay, we got to remove that material. And there's my handle. What's next? Gosh, the box. Here we go. Uh, part studio. And this part studio I'm going to call the bottom. Rename. Bottom. Well, now we're really cruising because bottom is, uh, the bottom is, let's see, full dimensions. So it's five wide and four tall. It's, 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 it's five wide and it's four tall. Four deep, sorry. Four, four deep. And then we're going to extrude it by an eighth of an inch. No, quarter of an inch. We extrude by one quarter of an inch. That's a, the material is actually, the actual physical material is one quarter of an inch thick. There's the bottom. You know I, th like, you know I like things to be beautiful. 
So I'm gonna change the color to something beautiful like that. That's much more beautiful. Um, there's the bottom. Wait, watch this. Guess what's the same size as the bottom? The top, that's right. We've got a winner. Let's, so let's just duplicate this. And instead of calling it bottom copy one, we could call it something else, maybe like top. Okay, there's my top, done. Now how about this, how about a side? I only need to draw one of them because I can import it twice. So, so rename this to side. And the sides are, I'm gonna draw the right plane so when I import it, I have an easier time. I'm gonna sketch. And the sides are, let's see, full depth. They're full depth, so they're five inches, uh, sorry, four inches deep, but they're only 3.5 inches tall because there's material above and beyond, above and below them. And then we record that, sorry, we extrude that to quarter inch. One over four, there's my side. I only need one of them. Uh, make it beautiful, like that. Oh, beautiful. Okay, side, what do I need now? Oh, just the back. I need to create a part studio, and I'm gonna call it something that makes sense, like back. And I'm going to wait on, on shape. Gotta push that around so it goes faster, there it goes. Right, and the back will be oriented in this orientation when I import it. Uh, so I'm gonna sketch on the front plane and the back, well the whole box is five wide, but the back fits flush, so we're only gonna do 4.5, there's a quarter inch material on either side. And the box is four inches tall, so we're gonna do 3.5 tall, so that there's material above and below it, and we are going to extrude that by one fourth of one inch. One over four, bang, and we're gonna make it beautiful. I don't know why I don't like, I don't know why I don't like this, that color, that default color, but it's just, maybe it's just boring or something. Something beautiful, there we go, rust. Rust is beautiful, okay. Um, all I need now, let's see, I need, I need a dowel, right, so for the axle, so rename axle, A axle, no, not axle, the guy in my class, axle, the thing in the center, okay, good, axle, and when I import that, I want it to be on this plane here, okay, and the axle is also really easy to draw, it's just a quarter inch, it's a 0.25 inch piece of wood. And I don't know quite how long we want it, but I'm just gonna do seven inches so it sticks out on either side of my box, my five inch wide box. And then if I need to trim it down, I can. Now that, that's not the color of wood. I've never seen wood that color. So I'm gonna to go to my appearance panel and I'm gonna change the color. And I don't know, that's more like wood, something like that. That's fine. Bang, there's my axle. I only, I think I, aside from my toppers, I just need, I, uh, aside from my toppers here, I just need rename I'm gonna put it on this plane, so when I import them on the right, I'm gonna, I just need my, my push rods. I just need my push rods. So I'm gonna sketch on that plane, I'm gonna do a circle, it's the same wood, it's a 0.25 inch piece of wood, and we're gonna extrude it by, um, I don't know, we'll try five inches and just see, and again, it's, it's really easy to change that if we want it shorter or longer. And again, that doesn't look like wood to me, so I go to my appearance panel and I click on that twice and I choose something that looks more like wood like that. And um, except for my toppers, the eye candy that goes on top, oh, I didn't rename that, did I? Push rod or pusher. Um, the top, the bottom, uh, let's see, what, if, did I change the color of the bottom? Yeah, we're good, okay. I'm ready for my assembly. So what I'm gonna do now is, um, go to the assembly file, and I'm just gonna import all this stuff, insert, and if I forgot to do anything, we'll do it quickly. I need, I need, I need all these things. Axle goes there, and the back, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep the, the parts, the, the, the axles and the cams and stuff separate and do the box first. Uh, here's a bottom. Notice how when I bring them in, they're in the right orientation, because I took a moment to think about what plane to draw them on. Here's the top. Here's the, uh, let's see, what else? I need, I need sides. Did I do a side? Yeah, oh, there it is. It just doesn't does have a preview. Side and side over here. Um, I'm gonna move that guy over to the side for a minute here. Then I'm gonna need, let's see, there's the axle. I'm gonna need an elliptical cam. 
Um, and I think I'll grab the, uh, the ha here's the handle. And I'm going to want a, uh, I'll just do a pair cam also, pair cam. And I'll leave the snail cam there. I need two push rods, one. I need another one, push rod two. And I need two guides. I need a guide here and a guide and another guide here. I don't know. That might be everything. Let's see what happens. If we need more, we'll go get it. I just have to put this together now. I'm going to light up my mate tool, fasten, and I'm going to fasten these up. Just have to watch that indicator. The center of the edge of that piece, I want to match to the outer edge of that face right there. There. Okay. Uh, the back is now fastened. Do the same thing the side. Let's see. This outer edge of this side right there goes to this outer edge of that part right there. You gotta watch that indicator, make sure it's in the right orientation. There it is. Boom, there's the side. Do the same thing to the other side right there. It's gonna get mated to there. And I just have to put the top on. And I'm gonna mate that outer edge to that face's outer center facing up, it's rotating, there we go, boom. Okay, I just assembled the box. Now, I need holes, so I'm gonna go find my side down here, easy to find, because I labeled it, and I'm gonna close this, I don't need that. I'm gonna put a hole dead center, that's easy. Sketch on that side, and, um, and um, um, there's dead center there, there's dead center there. And uh, I'm going to draw a 0.3 inch hole here, and I'm going to extrude it and remove it. And now I have holes on my side. I'm going to go to my top. Where's my top? There it is, top. It doesn't really matter where you put the holes, but if you measure where they go, it's, you have an easier time placing your cams. Um, let's go ahead and sketch on this top and grab some holes. You know, so I'm going, to, I'm going to put a hole about here, and I'm going to make it 0.3. I'm going to decide on where, where they go in just a second. I'm going to put a hole over here, 0.3. I'm going to grab my dimension tool, and uh, I'm going to see what distance I like. They're at one inch right now. Maybe, how about one, one and a quarter? Where does that place it? Yeah, that's great. One and a quarter. So this one I'm going to turn to uh, dimension tools on. I'm going to grab that 0.03. Double click on it and turn that into a... Um, a 1.25 as well. Oh, wait, no, that's the size of the hole. Sorry, 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 sorry. Leave that one alone. Um, I want to dimension, sorry, I want to dimension from here to the edge as, as 1.25, 1.25. Now those holes are equidistant from the sides. They're an inch and a quarter in. Um, and then I just extrude them and I remove the material and now I've got holes in my top and my sides. Now I'm going to go back to my assembly and uh, gosh, I don't know. Why don't we just go ahead and and why don't we go ahead and well, let's get the uh, let's get these guys in place. I'm gonna mate the center of this. Oh wait, I'm going to mate the center of that hole to the center of that hole. Um, I'm gonna have to fix that. It's it's um, that's that's okay. We can we can just offset it by whatever this distance is right here. Let's let's get them both in place. Then we'll offset them. Okay. While I have the mate lit up, I'm gonna go ahead and fasten the center of that hole. To this hole, and. You know, we can do this manually or not, but let's just do this. Let's just go to those fastened mates. I'm going to edit this and offset it. Right. So, um, you know, we can do this mathematically. Why don't we just go get this measurement so we don't have to guess? I'm going to go to my um, guide. Right. I want to. I want this part right here to sink down into the into the uh, into the assembly. So I want to know the length of that line right there. I'm going to choose my measure tool, 
that I choose that may or may not tell me. You know, it just tells me the diameter. Um, why don't I do this then? Sometimes when I need a measurement and the measurement tool is, is being persnickety, I just go sketch and I just do a quick line that I delete because this whatever the length of this line is right here, that's the number I'm interested. It looks like half an inch, right? So I'm just going to X that out. I don't want it. But ha see, what I know now is I want this to go down half an inch. So I go to my fasten and I offsite, I edit it and I and I um, offset it by 0.5 inches. Uh, it looks like it's on the blue, the Z axis. So 0.5. If it goes up in the air, we turn it to a negative 0.5. It went the right direction, right? How do we like it? Let's see. Looks pretty good. Okay. Other one, same thing. That was fastened with five. So, so, so edit, offset the fasten Z. We did. We liked our 0.5, so that seemed to work pretty well. Oh, that one. That's interesting. That one went the wrong way, but that's okay. Just make it negative, and there it goes the other direction. Now those guys are fastened there. Let's put these uh, rods right here in with a slider mate. They need to slide up and down, right? So you go up here and find the slider mate, and you get the center of that rod, and you put it right in the center of this hole. And my slider mate is still on, so I'm going to do the center of this hole, since I'm here, to the bottom of the other push rod, which is right here. Okay, so far so good. Let's check those mates. Let's close that out and let's just grab this. Yep, slides up and down for sure. That one too. I'm going to go ahead and put those feet onto those rods. The, 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 uh, did I import the feet? Maybe I didn't. It looks like I didn't bring the feet in. That's okay. Insert. Um, there it is, the follower foot. And I need two of them. One and two. I'm going to go and fasten the center of that hole right there, the bottom of it. I want the bottom of that hole on that rod right there. And I want the bottom of this one's hole. The, that's, the, that's the top. See, the, wait, that's the top. That's the bottom of the hole. I want the bottom of that one's hole on the, this rod right here. All right. Now... I want to put this guy in, What? Uh, that's a fast and I need slider again. Slide mate is right here. And I want, I want to put into, sliding into that hole, I would like, sorry, there it is, that. And funky things happen until you press the green check and then it should go back together. Ooh, something didn't work there. Um, that last one, slider three, seems strange. Wait. Something weird happened there. It didn't quite take. Let's try that again. Uh, slider. I'm just going to, I'm going to try, I'm going to start it up again. Slide mate. For some reason, that one did not stick. I'm going to choose the rod first this time. I want that to end up over here. There we go. And while we're here, let's offset it. Um, looks like we're still on the Z-axis the blue one, um, or not, are we not? Z-axis, offset. Uh, I'm not seeing a way to do this. Wait, let me just, let me just, wait, let me just go back to it, edit. Oh, looks like the first one did take. Delete it. We only need one slide made in there, right? Slider, edit, and I would like to, uh, well, that's curious. I'm not seeing a way to X, X and Y. This is strange. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo that. Uh, the the Z-axis offset is not showing up. I need to slide. See, I, I want it not like that, but I want it more, you know, more evenly placed, sort of in the middle. It's bumping around a little bit. Let me get that out of there. It should be free to go. Slider 4, delete. Uh, sometimes these things act a little weird, like right about now. Let's try that again.
Slide mate. Oh, wait. You know why? I don't want it to slide. That's a rotation mate. Am I crazy? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Revolute mate is what I'm after. This one, this, these guys slide up and down. This guy doesn't slide back and forth. This guy rotates. Sorry about that. That's a Revolute mate. I want, but same, same objective, uh, just different buttons. But now, thank you. Offset. Now you'll see what I mean. I don't. I don't want one end sticking all the way out and the other end flush. I'm just going to uh, z-axis offset it by, I don't know, 0.5 inches or something. And if it went the wrong way, I would do negative 0.5, but it went the right way. Okay, so um, I'm going to grab this and pull it up. So when I put my cams in there, it doesn't look too weird. Okay, now check this out. All I have to do is my handle on my cams now. Handle, it gets fastened. So when it rotates, the rod does too. And I go in here and I choose, I want that outer edge to be right about here. Fasten. But we've got to change the color of that thing, make it more beautiful. That's important. And then, watch this. I just need to put... Let's do that outer edge of that hole on this rod also, but we're going to offset it. Let's see. I did 0.5 inches. Um, let's just do it by eye, right? So let's do offset. Um, and I'm going to look right at the front of this thing. And my objective is to get that cam right under the follower foot, right? So on the Z-axis, I will go... Well, let's see, that's 1.5 inches. So that, that's 1.5 inches to this edge. That's another one. It should be about three. Let's try three. See where that gets us. Wrong way, but that just means try, let's try negative three. Okay, that is um, close but no cigar. That's got to be a, uh, about, an, a, let's see, the thickness of the thing, which is a quarter inch. Or is it an eighth? I think it's a quarter inch thick. So let's... Let's, um, oh, yeah, but I want to do it mathematically. So, so, so let's just go uh, not negative 3 in. Let's go negative uh, 2.75 in. And you can scroll. You can, you can scroll. Thank you, young student. I won't say any names in case, you know, they're sensitive. But uh, uh, you, you can press the arrows on your keyboard, uh, uh, the up and down arrows to to nudge it along. Oh, I like that. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, 2.65. It's a little bit left of where I want it. And and 2.55, 2.65. How about 2.6? That's where I want it. I'm gonna change. It. So I got there. I got really close by nudging it along with those arrow keys. But I think that's the number I want. There it is. Kind of dead center. Okay, good. And then the other one. Well, let's see. The other one's gonna be um, let's 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 accept that one, and then let's go grab our other cam, which is right here, and get this. We'll just get it close. I like that method. Make it easy. We'll put it here, and we'll offset it by. Um, we'll start with about six inches, negative six probably, negative six, and see where we're at. And we went too far, but that's okay, because we got an easy way to deal with that now with our little arrow keys. Oops. Um, offset, Z-axis, arrow keys. Let's see here. So right about there. That's good. Let's see. So 5.1 and 5.2. I'm going to go with 5.15, right in between those. Negative 5.15. Yours will be different. Depends where you put stuff. But I like that technique. Bam. Now all I have to do is let me just rotate this a little bit. Wait, let me get rid of that. Didn't mean to do that. Let me just rotate this thing. Oh, this could happen. This happens. Right, let me go back. Uh, sometimes, so, sometimes when you start to rotate things, everything rotates except for what you're holding. Go ahead and right-click on any side and fix it. There, I just nailed it to the wall, so to speak, right? Now... When I go click on this, um, when I click on this, there we go. Let's see what happens here. I'm not seeing those cams rotate. That's a little weird. Uh, let us just do this, get that up there a little higher, out of the way. 
and um, I want to do a tangent mate. I'm just about done here. I want to do my tangent mate right there, and I want this surface right here to mate to this surface here. If it goes all the way through, you flip your primary axis, and it comes up top. Okay. And then same thing over here. I think I just turned off my tangent mate. Tangent mate on that surface to here. And check. Pretty much done with the whole project. Let's see what happens if I go to my revolute mate. I just saw it. There it is. I right click on revolute and animate. And it defaults to 360 degrees. That's only one rotation. Let's just multiply it by 10. There's 10 rotations right there. And let's go ahead and see what happens. Um, absolutely nothing. Unable to compute steps, unable to apply transform instances may be constrained. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Those little faces on my, those little faces on my pair cam, I didn't take time to smooth out. So the easier way to deal with this is just to show you by bringing in another elliptical and just placing it real quickly with a fastened mate I think our number was 5.15, 5.15, negative, <clears throat> offset, z-axis, negative, I think our number was 5.15-er, it went, oh, it was, it was, oh, this time it's positive, that's interesting, <clears throat> and apparently not quite, but let me just do this. We light up my z-axis here, grab that number, and manipulate it. Oh, there it was, right there. Uh, 3, 5, and 4, 5. I'm going to go with 5.4. 5 .4. 5 4 to get it dead center. There it is. Solve it. And um, let me just get this guy up here so I can see that face. Get that tangent mate on there. Not sure what just happened there. I want that face. We'll that face to that face. And I think, now let's see what happens if we animate the Revolute Mate. Uh, it's here somewhere. There it is. Bang and bang and animate. And uh, 10 rotations. And let's see what happens here. Okay. So i got to go mess around with, with maybe my Revolute Mate or something. But this is the build-out, and if you do it, you know, if you, I, have, I just have to go troubleshoot. Something happened with one of these mates. But there's the whole box built. And, you know, i got to fiddle for a few more minutes. I'm going to turn this off. But i got to fiddle for a few more minutes just to get it to animate properly. But at this point, all I need to do is draw my cool little things up here for eye candy. These do look a little bit long to me. You know, I could easily go change their size right here. The follower rods, um, the push rods are a little bit too long. I'm just going to do this. I, I don't know what I have them at. Maybe five or six inches. Yeah. I'll bring them down to three. Go back to my assembly. That looks better. Right, but there's the whole assembly for you. And I don't know how long this took. Maybe a little bit longer than I thought. But but here's the whole here's the whole project done from stem to stern. We just have to, you know, iron out. That's probably my problem right there. A couple of these mates are weird. they got warnings on them. But I'm not going to do that online. I'm not going to do that in the video. I can go fiddle with that right now. But the box is built, and I can go optimize and figure out exactly why the animation isn't working. So there, there we go. The whole thing is ready to rock and roll. All right. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.